what's going on guys it's horse beef here and today i'm gonna break down the ufc 305 card now i'm not sure what i want to do here i don't know if i want to go through all the prelims or early prelims i think i'll just go and like bang out the the early prelims and prelims for you guys real quick so first off we have uh, stuart nickel versus uh, jesus aguilar and i'm picking jesus aguilar uh, I know he, he got that nasty overhand uh, right knockout at one point, but he is but he is mostly a jiu-jitsu guy or like a grappler for the most part, uh, right? A lot of his finishes are via submission, but now he's proved he has some power. And uh, Stuart Nickel, I believe, is, yeah, he's undefeated, which is interesting, but I believe this is also his first fight within the UFC. And I'm predicting a little wake-up call here and for his O to be snatched. That's, that's my personal opinion. I know some people are kind of high on Stuart Nickel, but I'm not... Overly sold on his skill set as a whole. I think, yeah, I think Jesus Aguilar will will get him out of there. Maybe not finish him actually, but I don't know. They're flyweights. I don't even like. I'm I'm not that familiar, and I don't really care that much about this fight to be honest. Song Kanan versus uh, Ricky Glenn. <clears throat> That's a tough one here. I'm gonna pick Song Kanan by first round TKO. I think he's a decent striker, and I think I think he'll TKO uh, Ricky Glenn in the first round. Tom Nolan versus Alex Reyes. Now, Tom Nolan is a nasty striker, and this is definitely the case of the UFC feeding a young, up-and-coming prospect, a old journeyman type. I mean, he's not even really much of a journeyman. He's just kind of old, and he's fucking 37 years old. Tom Nolan's 24, and he's a gross striker. He really is. I actually think he's one of the best strikers at lightweight already, and he hasn't really been able to prove that yet, but just, just based on his combination punching, the way he mixes in the knees, kicks, he's just really good on the feet, he is really, really talented on the feet, uh, has power as well, he's one of these, these these tall, like, lanky type builds, so he has that leverage on his shots, and you can just tell he hurts guys, he really does, and I think he's going to put hands on Alex Reyes, and I'm predicting a first round uh, KO as well, then we get into the prelims here, uh, Jack Jenkins versus Herbert Burns, at this point, Herbert Burns is quite old, uh, and Jack Jenkins is a very good striker, especially when it comes to, down to his leg kicks. Right, I, I believe he's going to chew up Herbert Burns' leg and uh, TKO him in the second round. He's a good striker. I like Jack Jenkins. I'm a, I'm a fan of his. Luana Santos versus Casey O'Neill. I'm picking Luana Santos by decision, and I won't speak much more about it. Uh, let me get into Joshua Koulibao versus Ricardo Ramos. I'm going to pick Joshua Koulibao by decision. Ricardo Ramos oftentimes is very reliant on a random spinning elbow knockout. I feel like for the most part, he'll be outclassed by Koulibao here, and Koulibao will beat him by decision. And with Junior Tafa and Walter Walker, it's tough because Walker, I feel like, has all the physical advantages on his side, but he just will find a way to lose, I feel. And Junior Tafa hits like a truck. Uh, this is tough, man. And I didn't even realize that Junior Tafa was so young. I thought he was like in his mid-30s at this point. I swear he's been around for so long, but he's barely even fought. He, guy has seven MMA fights, like professional MMA fights. That's crazy to me. But this one is so hard to, to predict. I feel like it's either going to be a Junior Tafa knockout or Walter Walker will drown him on the ground and maybe submit him or something. I don't know. This one is so hard to choose. I'm, I'm picking Junior Tafa by uh, knockout. In the first round, let's just say that. Then we get into uh, Li Jing Liang, the leech versus Carlos Pratas. Now I covered Carlos Pratas in my Dark Horses video. I consider him to be a potential future champ. And uh, yeah, the leech has been out for around two years now. I just think he hasn't been active enough. While Carlos Pratas has been finishing opponents, right, his most recent finish against uh, Charles Rajki was very impressive. And it's it's hard to see the leech getting KO'd here because we haven't really seen his chin get cracked that often in his career. He's always been tough as nails. Uh, but I can see Carlos Pratas getting it done. I'm not too sure though. Maybe maybe in the time off, the the leech's age has caught up to him. Maybe because he is getting up there. He's getting close to 40 at this point, right? And Carlos Pratas is in the the prime of his life. Mm, we just we, we've we've just seen no reason to believe that the leech can get KO'd, but I'm still gonna predict a second round uh, TKO finish from Carlos Pratas. I think he'll be the man to to crack the chin of uh, Li Jing Liang. Then we get into Tai Tuivasa versus y Yarzino Rosenstrike. Now this one can go either way, right? They're heavyweights and they're both not the greatest heavyweights in the world, so it's really just coming down to who will land the bigger shot first. But I'm picking Jarzino Rosenstrike. I think he'll be the one to land the shot in the first round tie. I know he's fighting uh, at home, but at the same time, I just don't rate him very much. I think Jarzino Rosenstrike is just a little bit more technical, and I believe he'll catch him. I think he'll catch Tai Tuivasa coming in at some point. And um, yeah, Tai will continue to get opportunities despite getting knocked out every single opportunity he gets. 
Matthews Gamrot versus Dan Hooker. And now this is a, a very easy decision to make. I think Gamrot is going to take down Dan Hooker for three rounds and completely grind him out. I don't see Dan Hooker really getting much done in this fight. The only real opportunity I see for him winning this fight is if he catches Gamrot with a knee up the middle as he reaches in for a takedown. That's the only case where I can see Dan Hooker winning this fight. Dan just doesn't really possess much pop in his shots anymore. I notice even as his kicks really like he can kick the legs pretty well, but the most threat really comes from his knees. Even when he when he throws his hands, I feel like he's very slow and doesn't really have a lot of stopping power in his hands. So yeah, at the end of the day, he has to land a knee the way I see it. But Gamrot is too good of a wrestler, great chain wrestler. I think he'll take down Dan Hooker quite easily over and over again, and this fight will be extremely boring. At least that's what I'm predicting. I could also see a scenario where like maybe Dan Hooker does catch Gamrot and get some close to, to a finish or something. I don't know, but Gamrot by by decision seems the most likely to me. Let me get into Kai Kara France versus Steve Ursig. Now I don't actually think that Kai Kara France is all that, in all honesty, and I do think that Steve Ursig is probably the best flyweight in the world right now. So naturally I do think he'll he'll get it done against uh Kyra France and I do think he'll finish him in the second round. He's just too clean on the feet. He has some of the best hands in the UFC, and I think he's going to put them to work and clean out Kaya Kara France's chin. I'm hoping he digs to the body as well and mixes it up like that. Mm. I, I can even see a first-round finish, but ultimately I do think he'll he'll put some damage on him in the first and then uh, get it done in the second. Steve Ursaig is just that guy, and he better get that title shot next because I think he'll he'll take it, man. Like If anybody's uh, dethroning Pantoja, it's going to be Steve Ursaig because he pretty much already did it right when you, uh, when you actually get down to it. And then we get into Drikas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya, the main event of the evening. Now, I'm not too sure if I'm super confident about this pick, but I am ultimately going to pick Drikas Duplessis to win this one. I just feel like he has more ways to win. Izzy, I get it. He's he's a contender again, and contender Izzy is just a different animal, but he's not in his prime anymore. And just based off his performance against Sean Strickland, if he's put on the back foot, and, and he's made to rely on his counter shots and he can't find his counter shots, we see him get deterred, right? We see him get deterred. He kind of gave up on himself in that fight. Now, maybe this contender version of Izzy will be different gravy, but I don't see him going out there and hunting down Drikas because the takedown threat is so pertinent in this one, right? You would, you would think unless Izzy shows up with, with like the biggest guy know we've ever seen, that he will be outmatched in the strength department here. Drikas Duplessis is a physical animal. He's probably the strongest guy at middleweight in all honesty. And he's so well-rounded. So he, he can he can piece up Izzy on the feet, I believe, because Izzy will be so worried about getting his hips down to defend takedowns. And that's that's what provides such a unique threat here because he's we've we've seen Izzy against Marvin Vittori where there isn't much threat on the feet, and he really only had to worry about uh, the grappling. We, we we saw him against Jared Cannonier where there's a lot of uh, power coming at him on the feet, but then he doesn't have to worry much about the grappling. So he's, he's, he's really able to keep his distance and fight a technical fight. And I guess we have seen him against Whitaker, who provides a takedown threat, but we saw a lot of that in their second go, and Whitaker had a lot of success doing it. But the difference with Drikas is that Drikas hits like a truck. He's tough as nails. He's not very chinny. He actually, he's not chinny at all. Like We haven't seen really any indicator that this guy doesn't have anything but uh, an adamantium chin. And he can mix it up so well. And he has like really, really suffocating top pressure. He's very good on top. And if Izzy decides to to employ a similar strategy to what he tried against Strickland, right, back up against the fence, shell up, and then rip some like, lean back, pull left hand, if he tries that against Drikas, I don't think Drikas is, is going to bite on the, the bait. I think instead he's just going to shoot for his legs and take him down and ragdoll him instead. So because of the fact that Drikas Duplessis is so well-rounded and has so many ways to win, and I really only see Israel Adesanya winning one way, and that is by decision. But ultimately, I am going to choose Drikas Duplessis. I am going to choose him by fourth round submission. I feel like that's the that is the prediction to make here. I understand that, right? Is he he might be more hungry, he might be more motivated than ever. But I don't put a lot of stock in that, right? Because what did Strickland say? Like Strickland ripped into Izzy and gave Izzy every reason to want to kill him going going into their fight, and he proceeded to backpedal and get absolutely pieced up by a one, a two, and a teep kick. Right, despite him being apparently the most sophisticated and highest level gra- or striker we've ever seen in the UFC, I don't buy all that. To be honest, I think when you when you take away Izzy's kicks, 
he leaves a lot to be desired on the feet. And I think that's what Jerk is going to do. I think he's going to remove the kicks. He's going to come forward, pressure Izzy like crazy. And I think he's going to land shots on the feet, stifle him a little bit, and just ragdoll him. And eventually, I think we'll see Israel Asanya start to get tired going to that fourth round. I think Drikas will take him down again and probably take his back. Maybe maybe Izzy's getting uh, getting ground and pounded from full mount. He gives up his back and then he gets choked out. That's how I see this fight happening. Although, I'm ready to be proven wrong here. And if Izzy becomes a, th- a three-time middleweight champion, it wouldn't even really surprise me, despite the fact that I don't like Izzy. I'm still an objective guy, and I realize that he is a very high-level fighter, and he has every chance in the world to win this one. Although, I don't see it happening, and I'm picking Drakus Dupasi. So those are my predictions, everyone. I will have another video coming out within uh, the next couple of days as well. I'm not really much of a prediction guy, but I figured that I may as well just give you guys my thoughts, but don't take my picks as an invitation to go out and bet based on what I've told you. I'm not a gambler myself. I don't bet on fights, really, and I don't like to give out predictions because I don't like to encourage that type of stuff. So uh, I want to put the disclaimer in there and say, like, if you are going to make a parlay based off my picks, I would strongly urge against it because fights are just so unpredictable and anyone can be right or wrong about a fight at any given day, right? So be responsible if you're going to be gambling on this card. But anyway, guys, I do appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next one.